As you guys can see, it was an eventful trip for Big J's Knives. Um, everyone kind of knew I was taking a trip back home for my granddaughter's birthday. Um, going to show you what I EDC'd for that and uh, show you what happened along the way that uh, kind of wound me up in a medical facility. So <laughs> we'll kind of go through. Um, this is what I kind of took for, for my EDC. And uh, what we'll look at, this is everything I kind of had when I when I first made the trip, okay? Now, uh, of course, I took the case copper lock, the old red saw cut. This is just more of a conversation piece. It's kind of why I took this one. And, of course, you know, we got the old uh, Richter slip that I threw this in. And then, because I knew I was probably going to have to help open packages and whatnot... I took the old Buck 112 Sport Pro along for the ride. This is uh, slowly becoming one of my favorite EDC blades. It's slowly taking over for the Para 3. Um, it's just, it feels so good in my hand. So that's kind of why I took these two blades. A conversation piece, and then one to actually do some work and get some packages open and, and help my granddaughter with her birthday. You know, I thought, hey, you know, it's her birthday. I, Grandpa's going to come along. We're going to help you out. And uh, boy... Things took a turn there. Um, so everything else I kind of took on my secondary trip, which was to the medical facility. Um, so let's talk about that real quick. Um, I uh, landed there. You know, we got there. We drove there. But we got there, I think, Wednesday evening. Thursday morning, I got up at 4 a.m. Went to the YMCA about 5 a.m. Got my bench press workout in. You know, went home. My mom uh, cooked me some breakfast. I ate that. Uh, my stomach felt really full. Um, we kind of drove around a little bit. Uh, I went to a place where I could probably pick up some case knives. And, uh, you know, just wasn't feeling very good. And uh, didn't really buy anything. I bought, well, actually, I did buy this. This was, look at the price on this. $19.99 for this field sharpener. You can't beat it. Um, so I wasn't feeling too good. Uh, and I bent over to put the dog in the, the back of the car. And I, I ripped the whole ass out of my jeans because um, <laughs> we were going to go out to eat. And I'm like, well, we can't go out to eat or go to another place to buy case knives. Uh, I need to go home and change and we'll just eat lunch at the house. So we went back to my mom's house. We ate lunch. I, I really, my stomach really still wasn't feeling good. I ate a little lunch and then my stomach felt really full. Um, so we kind of left there and uh, I, I can't remember what all we did after that. Um, you know, we did some things. Uh, then we went and seen my granddaughter later that day, and I was still feeling super full. As a matter of fact, we ate lunch at 1, and this time it's 7 o'clock, and I'm still... And it's not like me not to want to eat, you know. I need to eat to lift, to be strong, and I'm just... Uh, I'm addicted to food anyway, but I'm like, it's 7 o'clock. I'm not at least a little bit hungry. I'm like, if you guys aren't that hungry, we can just go through a Dairy Queen and maybe get a milkshake or something. And they all agreed to that, so we stopped and... Dairy Queen and we got a pup cup for the dog and my wife got something my mom got a a milkshake so I got a milkshake too and I ate that milkshake and I went to my mom's house and my stomach at this point is just feeling really full like it's got a bag of concrete in it um, maybe nibbled on some sub, something later on that evening probably about eight or nine maybe nibbled on something small she always makes candy and stuff so I went to bed and at uh, 11 o'clock I wake, woke up in just screaming pain uh, my stomach, it felt like there was a squirrel inside my stomach trying to, and it's on fire. The squirrel is on fire, dousing gasoline, and it's trying to make its way out from under my rib cage. That's what I felt like. So I'm like, I'm sweating all over the place. I, I, I go to the bathroom, try to use the restroom. Um, I spend like three hours probably in the restroom. At one point, I'm on my hands and knees. And I'm throwing up in the toilet. And I'm going back and forth from uh, the master bedroom to the to the to the restroom. You know, my wife's waking up a little bit. She's like, "What's wrong with you?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know if it's something I ate. I, I just don't know." I said, "It's it's. I'm on fire." And I tried to drink some milk and take some antacid, and that made it even worse. Um, so, at this point, the bed is like covered in sweat because I'm trying to get in bed and get comfortable enough to sleep. I'm going back and forth from the restroom to the bed, from the restroom to the bed. And finally at 4 a.m. I was like, I, I can't do it. I've got to go to a hospital. So I got dressed and of course we have our dog with us. So we can't, I don't want to leave the dog there at my mom's because she'll start whining and wake my mother up. 
And what I did is I just kind of got dressed and I snuck out of my mom's place, got in the car. It's foggier than all get out in West Virginia. And I'm like, I got to try to get to the hospital. So <laughs> I get in the car. It's foggy. I can't hardly see anything. I'm trying to drive. And I just finally, I made myself just kind of focus and drive to the hospital. I made it to the hospital. So this is where it kind of gets interesting. I, I get to the emergency room area and there's a security guard there. And I'm like, he's like, what can I help you with? I was like, I got to get to a doctor now. Um, and he's like, you got to empty your pockets, put everything on my table. And uh, this, uh, this is actually, I didn't have these with me. My wife brought these later on, but you know, I took all this stuff off. Empty my pockets. Of course, my awesome wallet my son got me a few years ago for Christmas. But what's interesting is this keychain. All right, look at this. You know, I've got a Swiss Army knife, an SD Classic. I've got a screw pop. Of course, my flashlight. And I knew when I was going to the hospital, I was like, I cannot take either one of these. So when I was getting ready, and of course, you know, I always have my phone. So we'll put that up there too. So when I was getting ready to leave for the hospital, I was like, I was smart enough to leave these there. So I've got all this stuff, I've got this thing, and I actually, I handed it to him, all this stuff, he pushed it through the other side, he goes, alright, you go in right there, and I was like, I was surprised he didn't junk this and this, or at least keep it and maybe give it to someone later, but he just passed them on through to me. <laughs> so I got in the emergency room, and I, I can't even stand up at this point, like, I can't stand up straight, <laughs> you know, I... I just can't do it. Uh, it was too painful. Uh, my stomach, I just couldn't do it. And the lady come out from behind wherever she was at and she was like, can I help you? I was like, I got to get to a doctor like now. And uh, she's like, let's get you checked in. So she takes me over to this wall and, and like wants me to type my information in on the wall. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> so she gets me back. They put me in a room. The doctor comes in and uh, I kind of explained to him what was going on and he poked, he said, I think I know what it is and the last point I'll poke is probably what the, what the problem is. So he, he poked all around my stomach, my back, and he goes, now what you're telling me, this probably, next thing is probably going to hurt. And he just touched uh, underneath my right rib cage a little bit and I was like, ugh. So after that, he's like, yeah, I think you got a gallbladder problem. <laughs> so I was like, I don't care what I got. I was like, you've got to give me something for the pain. Like at this point, I'm, I'm just about ready to die. So they, uh, some nurse guy comes in, he's talking to me, he's just taking his time. I'm like, dude, you've got to get me out of this pain. And uh, he shoots me up with some Dilaudid. And it kind of took care of it like right then, pretty fast. And uh, then they will be down for a test or two, I'm not sure. Uh, I know I had a CT scan, an ultrasound, and that took probably an hour. And at the, at the end of this hour, I'm like... You guys have got to get me out of pain again. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. you got to get me up. So they come back and they said, this next test we're going to do is like a nuclear imaging test. And they didn't want to shoot me out of the narcotics. So they gave me something else. It took care of it. And then from then, I was, uh, they said, we're admitting you to the hospital right now. And I'm like, that's fine. Whatever you got to do, I, I just don't care what you got to do. Just make sure my insurance will pay for it. Um, so they're like, well, we don't call about that. I was like, well, you need to send a case manager in here. I'll give her my card and she can call it. She did that and everything was good. Um, they took me up to a room and that's kind of how you see me in that picture. Um, you know, I was on antibiotics drip the entire time, fluid drip the entire time. I guess by the time I got to the hospital, I was dehydrated. Uh, my liver functions were, were messed up, wonky. I don't know. And, uh, they were like, we got, uh, you probably gonna need surgery. And I'm like, listen, I'm from out of town and I got a birthday party to be to tomorrow at two and I've got to get back home Sunday. I'm like, I don't know if an option of me having surgery here is going to make it or not. So the surgeon come in and I explained it to him. He was very understanding of like about why I was even there with the birthday party for my granddaughter. I was traveling from out of town. I'm like, if you can just get me back home without doing a surgery, I can get the surgery back home. If you can just get me back home, that would be great. And he was totally understanding. He's like, I'm going to give you meds. Yeah, they ended up, uh, I ended up leaving the hospital with five prescriptions. I was in the hospital for probably 32 hours. I had five uh, prescriptions. I took those. I got out of the hospital at 11 a.m. on Saturday, and my granddaughter's birthday was at 2 p.m. So I had enough time to, they let me take a shower at the hospital. My wife picked me up. She got me to my mother's. 
uh, I was able to shave, change clothes, uh, get everything kind of ready, and then I made it to the birthday party. And they gave me medicine so I could kind of make it through that. And then I knew the next day I had to drive uh, seven hours to get back home. So uh, Sunday I woke up, kind of took my time. I uh, went and see my granddaughter again. Of course, Saturday night I had to take some medicine to be, even be able to sleep because it was so painful. But, uh, yeah, Sunday I went and see my granddaughter again. Spent a few hours with her. And then uh, slowly made my way back out west to the house. Um, you know, just kind of took our time. And uh, we had to pick our dog up at a kennel. One of our dogs. One of our dogs went with us. One had stayed at a kennel. Um, but, yeah, this is... Uh, but yeah, this is kind of what I, what I had EDC and um, when I was in the hospital. I had my Apple Watch, I had me some chap on my stick, I had my wallet, I had my keys with my screw pop and uh, Swiss Army SD Classic. My wife brought me some AirPods. Um, of course, my nasal spray because I can't sleep without it and I did good to sleep anyway. And I wore this hat in. I think they would like that. Now, I, I lost my other hat. I don't know where my cinch hat's at. And of course, I had my cell phone. And... Uh, What's interesting is when I was in there, I was like, maybe I could watch videos of people. And I tried, honestly, between dozing in and out and nurses coming in every half hour to take vitals and this and that. And, uh, and I tried to make comments on some videos and I couldn't do it because every time I would bend my right arm, they had the IV in my right arm and right in the bend of it. And every time I would bend my arm to try to type anything... Um, it would shut the pump off and start an alarm. And every time I did that, I had to call a nurse to come in and shut the alarm off and uh, get it pumping again. So, And she was like, it's it's like that because he had to hurry up and get the IV and where he got it in. Because I got all these veins on my arms, but he had to he had to pick the worst possible spot ever to do it. Because if it was in my forearm or somewhere where there, you know, plenty of veins on my forearms and whatnot. But uh, I guess he wanted to do it in the other spot. But anyway, um, yeah, I tried to make comments, and like I said, every time I did, um, it would just alarm that thing and create havoc, and uh, it was a nightmare, guys. <laughs> it was a teetotal nightmare, but they were very understanding, and it's Monday now. Uh, what I had to do was, once I got back here, I no longer had a primary care physician here because mine left and went somewhere else, so when I called to explain the situation, like, we got to get you into a whole different primary, which is going to take... Uh, two months. I'm like, I don't have two months. Um, so what I did is I went to convenient care with my hospital. And of course, what I did was I hooked up, they have these accounts when you go to a hospital now. So I signed up for the WVU uh, medical account and I tied that to my Carl account. So when the doctor at convenient care um, typed my name in, it had all my test results, imaging, everything from my hospital stay. So she come in, she was very understanding. Um, she sent a thing up to get me referred for surgery. So I'm not sure when and if that's going to happen. I mean, I've got to do something, I, I guess. But, uh, yeah, she understood and uh, got me taken care of. And uh, now I guess next stop is uh, to get this thing pulled out of here, my gallbladder pulled out. I guess uh, I got a ton of stones and they were blocking my bile ducts. And when it did that, it spasmed. And that's what caused uh, the... Uh, crazy pain in my liver functions and even my kidneys were were a little uh, wonky because I was dehydrated because I couldn't eat anything I guess I guess that's why I'm not 100% I'm not sure but and there's a few guys um, who knew I was going on vacation who asked hey how's your trip going and uh, of course I had to say uh, well not too good I'm in the hospital um, one of them of course you know Kevin Boston Blade Reviews Doom Crew and Jersey Knife Guy all three of those guys I communicate with daily and they kind of made a little fun for me, you know, just, I'm like, hey, look at this, you know, I sent them the picture of me in the hospital, and uh, they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, dude, it just a uh, freak, uh, freak thing happened with my gallbladder, and uh, yeah, I want to thank those guys for kind of making it a little funner, because, you know, when you're in there and you're kind of by yourself, you know, just having someone to chit-chat with, send messages back and forth was kind of fun. Uh, of course, my wife would come too, but you know, she had her dog and, you know, my mom and, and all this other stuff and had to get things ready for the party because I'm like, we're going to the party. I'm not going to miss my granddaughter's second birthday because of this horse shit. So the doctor, he hooked me up. Um, so, yeah, we'll see kind of how this plays out.
But yeah, this is my EDC for my vacation slash hospital trip in West Virginia. So guys, hey, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, you know, tell me what you think of this crazy story about being hospitalized while you're on vacation and then them being understanding enough to let you uh, drive seven hours back home. But I did want to have the surgery, missed the party, plus I would, there's no way I'd be able to drive seven hours after having that surgery the following day. So uh, it just kind of all played out and we'll kind of see how this thing lands uh, here in a couple of days. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hey, leave me a comment. Like I said, subscribe to my channel. Plenty of knife content on here. I got another piece coming. Thanks to Randy's WSG for, and I actually, Pete, also a Jersey Knife guy, sent me the information on those Sheffield uh, Barlow's, Taylor Eyewitnesses. So guys, hey, also tune in. Hopefully this Saturday we'll have happy hour live chat again. Me and Boston are going to see what we're going to do with that. And of course I'll make a community post on it. All right, guys, stay sharp, stay strong.